Hi, Jerry Kafitz here, and I'm going to talk to you today about a topic, How Does a Good Church Become a Cult? This is video number five in a five-part series, How Does a Good Church Become a Cult? A lot of cult-type churches are very rigid in their orthodoxy. They're very authoritarian, and they tend to be established more on Old Testament models than New Testament models. They tend to be more established on the basis of image and roles and a strict hierarchy rather than on the principle of, of grace, this universality of position in terms of all of us being a believer priests in the New Testament church. We don't see the emphasis there. They'll tell you they believe that, but we don't see the emphasis there in cult-type churches. Image is all important. Position is all important. And the pastor very often has an elevated role that has more in common with Old Testament teaching than New Testament teaching. In the New Testament, the authority of the pastor is something that's given voluntarily. It's given on the basis of respect, and the words used to describe that have more to do with the concept of faith. Uh, the Greek word episteste, the word for faith, that is supposed to be the New Testament characteristic of the believer's relationship with his pastor. One is supposed to have faith in the pastor, not be subject as to, to, to his authority. That's supposed to be voluntary. Okay? There tends to be a lot of legalism in cult-type churches. Uh, by legalism, I don't mean that in the true sense. Uh, that has to do with the definition of the process by which we, we achieve salvation, but rather the process by which the lives of individual people within the church is structured and determined. Lots and lots of rules. Uh, you don't break those rules with impunity. Even if they're unspoken rules that have to do with an orthodoxy of dress, uh, an orthodoxy in terms of, of where people sit in the church. Who has what position, who has what role. And in church polity, uh, there's a place for that. The New Testament, of course, talks about how a church is supposed to be structured, but a, a, a cult church has its roots more in this Old Testament hierarchy, which in fact we could legitimately call a theocracy, and that explains a lot about how a cult church functions. It functions as a theocracy, which is a blending of spiritual, civil, and political power. And so the, the grasp of the leader of a cult-type church over the life of the church member is very broad, very pervasive. Um, I've heard people in churches like that kid that uh, uh, they don't rearrange their furniture without getting a counseling session with their pastor. And although that's meant to be uh, in the context of humor, um, there's a little bit of truth to that, and that's what makes funny. That's what makes all humor funny. There's a lot of ritual in a Baptist church. There are a lot of ritualistic things that have to do with how we function, and, and, and people find comfort in that. We find a diminution of, of grace in, in cult-like churches. We find that the requirement is for rigid adherence to rules and not an overlooking of, of, of transgressions on the basis of grace. In other words, the forgiveness that was extended to us as believers in Christ by the Lord Jesus Christ, through His grace, through His mercy, not through our, our accomplishments, not through our own merit, is something that is usually not reflected in the workings and in the relationships of a cult-like church as it reflects these Old Testament principles uh, in its relationship with believers. So there you go. There's a, an overall description throughout this five-part series of how a good church can become a cult. How a good church can become a cult. Basically, it comes when the church itself becomes an idol. When Jesus Christ has been replaced as the only figure who should be on the altar with the church, when decisions are made, not on the basis of righteousness, but on the basis of what is the most expedient 
decision for the church. What is in the best interest of the church? When that happens, that's the beginning of the end. The church doesn't have a mandate that allows it to be excluded from the principles of righteousness just because it needs to continue. No, it doesn't need to continue. It needs to express the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And in that expression, it finds its right to continue. Absent that expression, it does not have a right to continue. And you're not going to end it. I'm not going to end it. God is. But we can certainly make the decision, this is not a healthy church. This is not where I want my family. I'm Jerry Kafins.